guests, the UN and EU delegation under the Spotlight Initiative, you're very welcome to the House of Representatives. Let me first of all start by apologizing that I came in a little bit late. I was held back and um, just time just ran away from me. So I apologize for that. Um, let me say from Jump Street that the well-being of a woman, I have always believed, um, is the well-being of a nation. We cannot underplay the importance of women in any society or in any nation. This is why we have taken in the National Assembly, in the House of Representatives particularly, the issue of uh, gender-based violence as perhaps one of the more serious issues that we're facing and confronting head-on in the Ninth Assembly. Incidentally, on Saturday, a couple of days from now, we will be launching, uh, unfolding our new legislative agenda post-COVID. Uh, we had a legislative agenda that we launched last year, but because of the advent of COVID, we are about to update and revise. And I'm featuring prominently in that agenda is uh, 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 this issue. So you're welcome to attend at the Congress Hall at the Hilton on Saturday. Uh, nine o'clock um, if you have the chance to be available. The, the way I personally, and I've said this over and over again, uh, for us to achieve maximum result in terms of eradication uh, of this problem, uh, I think we should look at it and look at it perhaps almost even scientifically. One, I've often defined it as a pandemic. And I define it as such or I compare it or say it's a pandemic because of the very definition of what a pandemic is. A pandemic is a disease that ravages the whole world. Let's just put it in straight terms. The issue of sexual-based violence or rape, if you want to be more specific, is something that is permeated, it's not isolated to Nigeria, but we're in Nigeria now, we want to deal with it in Nigeria, but it's world over, number one. Number two, a lot of it is based, I believe, has to do with your mental state. So if we accept these two notions that, one, it's a pandemic, and we should deal with it as such, the same way we're dealing with the coronavirus right now, the way we're giving it a frontal, uh, frontal attack, we're going to get somewhere. Two, if we if we accept the fact that many of these guys, for want of a better word, that are involved in sexual-based violence and rape are probably not all there mentally. That's why I said scientifically. Then we'll also be looking at all the measures to deal with the problem. Does it have to be all punitive? Or does it have to be curative. Do we cure the problem where, where you have situations where, because if you have somebody who is even saying it you know, turns my stomach, who rapes a three-year-old or three-month-old, he obviously cannot be all there. So sending him to jail does not even cure the problem if it's a mental problem. There are those who basically are just perhaps perverted one way or the other. But there are those who also have what you call in legal terms depraved minds. And that's a mental illness. So I think 
in dealing with this She may be physically present. She's actually, for all intents and purposes, dead. So we, we're giving it all the seriousness. So you can even consider it at the level of the level of murder. And that's how far I want to stretch it. Because if you do not give something, you can call it dramatic, you can call it whatever it is, but if you do not give it that seriousness, the same seriousness as you give first degree murder. Because if you're taking somebody's life away, it's not just necessarily physically. You can take somebody's life away emotionally. And if we don't deal with it in that, uh, from that prison, we might just be scratching the surface, uh, the problem on the surface. So that's how we have taken it in the, in the House of Representatives. We had a, we had a, we, did, we, we devoted a whole day to debating this problem. And our members went as far as they had, they were far-reaching proposals. And that's how to, just to emphasize how serious we took it. People talked about genital mutilation uh, or castration. People talked about life imprisonment. People talked about death sentence uh, because of the gravity with which we see this, uh, this, this problem. But in doing that, we must also identify that in places like Nigeria, there are social, cultural, and structural problems that we must also handle very carefully. Some it's cultural, some it's religious, some it's structural. But sometimes I have said, I've said oftentimes that those, prop, those, those, uh, those barriers are there, but I also believe that we can break down those barriers. Because no matter the, the, your religion, no matter your culture, there are some things that are universal. There are, there are lines you just don't cross. There is no religion that will tell you that you, you, can, you, you, you can take advantage sexually or abuse a three-year-old or a 10-year-old. There's no culture, there's no religion. So let's begin from there. And then we begin to, to, to pluck away bit by bit. Um, you talked about the Senate bill. I can assure you that even though the House is going away on Thursday, tomorrow, uh, yet yeah, tomorrow, for a long vacation, um, as soon as we come back, I will call for, for, for the transmission of the Senate bill. We'll look at, the, we'll look at it, probably, and hopefully concur without adjustment. If we can even stiff in whatever is in there, we will do that. But we can be assured that the House of Representatives will not, uh, will very speedily concur with that bill uh, upon resumption. Uh, of course, the issue of funding. There's no way you can, uh, like I said, it's a, it's a pandemic. We're dealing with coronavirus, we're dealing with a lot of money. And there's no way we, you can confront uh, a disease such as this without funding. And hopefully in September, towards the end of September, I believe that um, the executive will pass, will, sell, will, will send the budget uh, to the National Assembly, and this is a, a one-line item that we will all be looking out for, and we'll make sure that uh, you can be sure that the women uh, here uh, will look at that budget with a fine-tooth comb and we'll make sure that uh, proper, adequate funding uh, is, um, is uh, uh, for this particular issue is part of the, is part of the budget. The 
women have been very, very proactive on the floor of the House. But I did something um, very interesting when we had that debate. I more or less shut them out of the debate. Um, they all wanted to contribute. But I didn't want to make, and I say this again with all seriousness here, I don't want, the, and I'm glad, glad there are lots of men here with you, I don't want this debate to be about women, uh, even though it's gender focused. I don't want it to be about women. I want it, and I've said it over and over again, and that's why during the debate, I made sure it was the men that, uh, that, uh, that advanced the points. Let the men fight that fight and fight your cause for you. And it, it, becomes, it becomes something that we'll all own and take ownership of, that this is, uh, this is something. It's not about, it's about women, but it's, all, it's not about women. It's about humanity. It's about humanity, and that's, what we're, that's, that's the way we intend to, to approach it. Um, on the issue of um, domestication of the violence against persons, uh, the 2015 Act and the Ch Child Rights Act of 20 2003, um, my office has done quite a bit to sensitize the states. We had a, a conference with all the speakers about a month ago, thereabouts. Uh, and uh, a, lot of a lot of work is going on in that regard. The, 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 the chairman of the conference of, of the speakers of the Northeast uh, is from Bauchi State, I think, uh, Abu Bakr. He did promise at that conference that they will domesticate it in, uh, in, in um, the act in Bauchi, and I'm glad to report that that has been done. And he's also sensitizing his colleagues in the North to do the same. I have written to them, intend to write to them again, and to give them a little nudge and push uh, towards the domestication of, uh, uh, of of those two of those two of those two acts, and I'm sure that uh, with continuous pressure, uh, they, that that also will be done in most of the states of uh, of Nigeria. So um, there are lots of there are lots of uh, lots of needles to thread, and will not be found wanting. As far as the House is concerned, this is, a, this is, a, this is something we're championing. We're, we're working with CSOs, we're working with NGOs, we're working, we still met, I think it was uh, uh, just two, two weeks ago, yeah. the group led by the, uh, the First Lady of uh, Cardona State, uh, they were here. We're working in partnership with them. And um, we'll just continue to, to push. Um, until we get to where we're, where we're trying to get to. Uh, the sexual harassment uh, bill, uh, the sexual harassment uh, uh, of students, uh, that obviously is a no-no. Uh, but on a lighter note, there's also the issue of sexual harassment in the workplace. I don't know if, you, uh, if you're pushing for that. Are you? OK, if you're pushing for sexual harassment in the workplace, yeah, you're going to have to do a lot of work. Uh, no, I, I hear you snigger, but the reason why I say so, there's a lot of sexual harassment in the workplace, but we're going to have to get the definition very right. And that's where cultures differ from, differ from culture. You know, it's not going to be a one-size-fits-all uh, uh, bill in that particular case. Because I see my, my colleagues, my female colleagues, Honorable Linda, uh, anytime I say, oh, Linda, I like your outfit. You look very nice today all innocuous and very innocent. So if we use that same standard or threshold uh, that is used in uh, America and the rest of them, I'm going to be in trouble. Everybody is going to be in trouble. So whilst I support the issue of sexual harassment in the workplace, um, we have to look at what, what is the tr tradition. Now, we used to paying compliments in Nigeria. Uh, is that what we do uh, as, as people? Uh, so I, I look forward to seeing it's that definition section that's going to be uh, something we need to work closely, closely, closely with. Uh, so we know what bar not to cross, what line rather not to cross. Um, so I think um, I must commend you for the work you've been doing, that you continue to do, your collaboration uh, with us. Uh, we look forward to a more sustained partnership 
because this thing is probably, again, like I said, because it's, uh, um, some of it borders on mental illness, it's not going to go away just like that. So it has to be sustained. It has to be still sustained. And uh, so we look forward to uh, continued uh, relationship. Um, uh, and I'm sure together we can, um, we can um, deal with this, uh, this, uh, this problem that seems to, to have consumed us all. So I think um, I've covered all the covered all the ground. Uh, there's um, there's a lot more. You have my special assistant on gender is here. I'm sure you know her very well, Fatima. Uh, so this this office is open to you. Uh, we want to work with you. We want to work with you uh, to protect our women. Very 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 important. What about piece, other piece of legislation that you think we need to uh, to address? We're here to do that. So, having said that, um, I can see we have quite a number of members here. Quite a number, and that tells you that tells you. But normally, when we have a uh, courtesy visit, uh, members are in their offices doing their thing uh, because they have a lot of work to do. That they're all here and tells you the seriousness with which we. I, I think we should even take introduction, self-introduction, so that you uh, 